Hi everybody, welcome, H2O. This is lesson 6C, and we are talking this week about being fruitful, fruitful for God. So let's pray and begin. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for who you are, for your, your holiness, Lord God, for your forgiveness, for your righteousness, Father, that dwells within us. Lord God, cause us to be your hands and your feet in your mouthpiece, Lord God, cause us to see the way you see and to hear the way you hear. Give us a heart for people, Lord. Lord, let us be like souls on fire for you, Lord God, a zeal after your righteousness and kingdom, Father. Thank you so very much just for loving us, that you never leave us and you never forsake us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So uh, we left you, of course, yesterday with a cliffhanger. Coming out of Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. It's not much to read. We're going to go ahead and read that today. Uh, if you're not with me, don't forget. Hit pause. Dig it out. Find it for yourself. You are the light of the world. This is Jesus talking. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So the first question is, what is this light in us that cannot be and should not be hidden? Well, it's not the good works because it says, let your light shine so they might see good works. Otherwise, he would have just said, let everybody see your good works. The light that needs to shine is the Holy Spirit that lives within us, shining God's righteousness. The more that we do righteously, the more that we do from a righteous perspective, in other words, out of pure love, not out of wanting anything back, not out of just being holier than thou, not out of pride or anything else, but purely out of love, like God did it, that shines his Holy Spirit. Through his Holy Spirit, we do good works. So the light that should not and cannot be hidden is a Holy Spirit. You could have even said the new man that rises up because that's only through the Holy Spirit. All right, let's read the other one, Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Verses 15 through 20, Jesus still speaking here. He says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. In other words, they look good. They might say and do all the right things, but they don't have that love that is um, most necessary. Uh, verse 16, You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather? Grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good, uh, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Now Jesus is giving this example to people in their day, they would completely understand this idea of pulling fruit from the appropriate tree or bush or vine. Um, today, a lot of people might not even realize where stuff comes from, and I know. But um, they knew what he was talking about here. And they understood, too, if a tree that doesn't bear good fruit doesn't bear stuff, oh, yeah, chop that thing down dig it up by the roots and plant a tree that will. They knew that as farmers, as workers of the land, as um, vine dressers and hus husbandsmen. That's hard to say, the old term. But um, they understood what he was talking about here by his example from nature. By your fruits you will know them. Now he's turning it to make you understand this is a metaphor. What is the fruit that they're supposed people I mean, I don't, there's no apple hanging off my limb, right? So what do you mean fruit? Well, we've been talking about this um, off and on since the series uh, started uh, five plus weeks ago. 
what they do, he says, you'll know them by their fruits. He says that twice, you'll know them by their fruits. What he's talking about here, and if you need a hint, you can look up Galatians 5, 19 through 23. Um, if they're truly of God, if they're truly a good tree, they'll bear good fruit. That is talking about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. In other words, by what they do and how they act and, how, and their intentions, because he's already said in the beginning, it can be confusing. Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. In other words, it looks good. Sometimes it looks good. But the longer you hang out with them and you keep watching for fruit. I had a friend one time talking about someone and she wasn't sure um, because they went to church and, you know, but they didn't want to talk about God. They didn't like to pray. They didn't, you know, they just went to church kind of. And she was like, how do you know? And I said, well, just watch for fruit. And after a while, she was a brand new Christian. After a while, she came back to me one day, and she said, you know what? There's not even a green tomato. You know what? We know. We can recognize. It's not just what they say and not necessarily just how they act, but also the attitude behind it, why they did it, the intent of their heart. God is the only one that can truly see deep inside like that. But he's telling us, you'll know. Watch them long enough. And again, this isn't about perfection. You're going to see people make mistakes. What do they do with a mistake? Do they recognize a mistake? Do they confess a mistake? Do they come back and repent of their mistakes and change so they don't do it over and over and over? And again, talking to me here this week, this is a tough week. But, uh, you know, talk is cheap. You can quote scriptures all you want. How do you live your life? How do you really live your life, not just in the hour at church. How do you live your life? Are you a ravenous wolf or do you show the fruits? Jesus said you will know them by their fruits. I hope you're having a great week. Oh, can't leave you there. We need a cliffhanger for tomorrow, don't we? All right, so you're going to be reading out of Isaiah 1, 16 through 20. And Micah 6, uh, verses 6 through 8. So your reading for tomorrow, the reading you do today, is coming from Isaiah chapter 1. That's in the Old Testament. Isaiah, it's a big one, though, in, in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. And then a very small book in the Old Testament. You might have to use your index for this one. Micah chapter 6 verses 6, 7, and 8. So uh, make sure you do your reading. The questions are down below. Doing good is something we, as Christians, must blank. And God wants us to be blank and blank. What three things are labeled here as good? One, two, and three. So fill in those blanks. Don't forget to pray. Don't forget to um, use forgiveness with others. Uh, don't forget, uh, I'm just stumbling here. I hope you've had a very blessed day today or about to have a blessed day, depending on when you're doing this study. Don't forget to spend time praying. Make sure you're checking your heart about forgiveness toward others. Make sure that you're studying God's Word. Don't forget to be fruitful. And we'll see you back here tomorrow.